going on, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Revived, episode number, we're number lucky 13 today. I am your host, as always, Shane Craig, and joining me is the lovely Jesse Craig. Hello. I like, I, I've, how do you feel about the number 13? I don't think we've ever really talked about this. Do you, do you find it problematic or troubling in any way? A lot of people think it's unlucky. Um, I kind of no. like the number 13. It's, it's actually a number that follows me around. Um, so it's like my number, like my lucky number. I've got 13 letters in my name, even after marrying you, which was kind of a plus. I have 17, lucky 17 numbers in my, in my <laughs> full name. That's a good name or a Thir- good number. 17. That's my, I'm, I'm now Android 17. <laughs> 13's kind of followed me around too. My when I when I first moved out, my apartment was apartment number thirteen, mm-hmm. and that maybe should have that's awesome. Maybe should have been at home in because it was not a it was not a good place. It was not a good both mentally, physically, and really all manners. Apartment thirteen was not a good place for me. <laughs> so Why maybe do you think thirteen I have, is bad. I have thirteen in my uh, gamer tag. This mm-hmm. agreeable blah, blah, thirteen. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I guess it's like. Yeah, that's true. Well, we're episode number 13 today. It's going to be so guys, a good one. I think we've got a good show for you today. We have a few a few pretty good topics. One topic that I think a lot of you might find relatively interesting. Hopefully you find all of the topics interesting, but one big one that I think will be the kind of the, the big thing for the show today, a good conversation. Um, and you know, let's just, let's just get straight into that one. Let's not, let's not dilly dally around. It'll probably be the title of the episode. So we don't want to be one of those people that's like here, you you know, those videos that you click on and like the title and the thumbnail is the thing. And it's at the very end of the video. Yeah. And you're like, like I came here for one thing. (laughs) Don't do that. So we're not going to be that. We're going to just talk about the thing. And if you want to keep listening, please do go ahead and do so. So. I guess it's been about two weeks ago now. Um, well, actually, we'll go back even further. So I've been covering the Surface Duo for um, since you know before it came out, and one of the things that we um, talked about in some of the videos was comparisons to the Duo with LG's dual screen devices. If you don't know, LG has uh, uh, basically a case where you can you know put your V60, your G8, ThinQ, you know what have you, into this case. And you then essentially have a dual screen phone. I'm pulling up a, a picture right now so I can kind of show people that are watching the video, not just in the podcast. And so I had kind of questioned, you know, how does that compare to using the Surface Duo, which is, you know, by default, a dual screen device that I almost just threw. I caught it. It's okay. It's okay. I saw it like... <laughs> <laughs> going that way, I'm like, ah. um, there's a bumper on it too, so it's okay. So I, I wanted to know, you know, look, the Duo is a fourteen hundred dollar device in the states, and something like the G8 or some of these other phones were quite a bit cheaper. So I, I kind of wanted to know, how does it compare? Is this thing worth, you know, in some cases, double the money? So of course we decided to put our money where our mouths were, and I decided to use. Jesse, my wife here, as as a, a guinea pig, and we were initially looking at the LG Velvet because that looked like the newer phone, had a thinner dual screen case, and so forth and so on. Well, the price happened to fall in such a way that the V60 had received a price cut, so that the V60 would be six ninety nine with the dual screen case. You're going to say, I want to say it was maybe two hundred dollars versus buying the Velvet and the case separately. We felt like it was better specs. We're gonna get the Vel or the uh, V60. You've used LG phones in the past. You always seem to really like them. Oh we'll, yeah. We'll buy this thing and we'll 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 do some content on it. We'll talk about how we feel about the two devices, kind of in a comparison sort of light. So we did that. Bought the thing. Got it about two weeks ago, and you've used it ever since. Well, a few days ago, we we came to a conclusion about the V60. And I, I don't, th- I think that for certain people, the V60 with the dual screen case would still be a really solid, a really good phone. But as it turns out, for you, maybe wasn't the, maybe wasn't the right phone for you. Do you want to talk about 
your experience with the V60, how yeah. you used it, how if you found yourself using the dual screen case, and then what led you to eventually, spoiler alert, decide that it wasn't the phone for you and that you wanted to actually return the thing. Yes. Um, so the the most that I used the dual screen would be while I was on my lunch break. Um, I would kind of have it like kind of in a in a pose like that where you know I would have it sideways so that I was watching like Netflix or YouTube right there call and it, I would have my messaging app down there. Call it lap, um, laptop mode essentially. Laptop. That makes sense. Yeah. So I would have it like that right there um, with messages on the bottom and YouTube or Netflix on the top. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's pretty much what I used both of the screens for. I would find myself using it in kind of like a notebook mode like that just doing whatever I was doing on the main screen. And then I would find myself not having anything on the other screen because as it turns out, maybe I'm just not the multitasking type when it comes to sure. the apps that were supported uh, on LGs. I want to say really quickly too, something that I have noticed is that I, I would say I spend 90% of my time in what they would call book mode, just opened up like this. And what's funny about that is I do not spend 90% of my time with two apps open. I would say maybe I spend 50, 60% of my time with two apps, like a, a large amount of time. But from an ergonomic standpoint, it's I often really find myself holding it like this and using the, the right screen. And it's, it, it's there's something about how it distributes the weight. I, I'm one of the, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pinky holder here. I use my pinky mm -hmm. at the bottom of the phone and it, Something about the way that it distributes the weight, this is more comfortable to me than using it in quote unquote phone mode. For whatever reason, it's like this way, all the weights in one place and it's less comfortable to me. So I, I can get where you're coming from, from a, from an ergonomic perspective. It probably, it might've been more comfortable, give you a wider device to hold on to. Right. And, um, you know, even though I didn't always have an app on the, uh, on the second screen, it was still like kind of nice just having another screen there. Like I had a pretty decent background and for whatever reason that was just like kind of nice. I was like, Oh, I just have another screen and it's kind of cool or whatever. Um, but some of the cons that I had were that there's not enough, there's not enough there in terms of software. There's like no software. You're just opening an app on one side and app on the other side. Um, so there's no software to go with it, so there was not, like, anything pushing me to use the second screen. Um, and then one thing, too, is I would flip the screen around just like you can do with yours, where you would just flip it, like, all the way around like that, like a mm -hmm. sandwich. And it was so thick. Yeah. And I was terrified of sitting it down like that in phone mode on the table because I was like, oh, I'm going to scratch the screen. So I would sure. just like flip it back shut and put it down. And honestly, I, I think that I was using my phone less because of it, because it was a physical act of like to open shutting it up. the phone, putting it down, picking it up, which I didn't mind that because it there's nothing wrong with using your phone less. Sure. That would be a good thing right now. Um, but I wanted to spend a day where I took it out of the case, mm -hmm. especially when I went to work because I was terrified of it falling out of my pocket because it wouldn't fit in my pocket. It's huge. It's a if gigantic you, phone. If you guys saw in the unboxing video, we had a portion of the video where you tried to pocket um, yeah. both devices. And I, I, I believe pocket the V60 test. stuck out at the top of your pocket by a good two inches. It, it, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's it's a, it's a colossal it's huge. phone. It's huge. It's a gigantic phone. And in the case, it's even bigger. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm terrified of dropping it at work and ruining this very expensive phone that I'm hearing that uh, you can't find replacement dual screen cases for right now. Yeah, you, um, we would have to have sent the whole phone the whole and case back, back and so it's a whole rigmarole there so what one thing that i want to kind of dive into a little bit deeper um so on the duo you essentially have two possible ways to use the two screens right you can have you can simply have um two apps open at once 
you know, whether it's Facebook and Instagram or whatever, or you can then use certain apps. I mean, any app can span across both screens, but certain apps will be more conducive of that. Some certain apps will be formatted in such a way to take advantage of being spanned across two screens. So like Microsoft News will give you, you know, a better experience by being spanned. So I find myself almost never spanning apps um, because to Which me, interesting. It, 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 to me, it defeats the purpose. To me, the purpose, it would be like, I don't sit down at my computer with dual monitors and have one app spanned all the way across both, even if it showed me two different views of the same app, I wouldn't do that because now I, I the, the point of this thing is that you can do two things without one occluding the other, right? I'm occluding, I'm only doing one thing if I span. And to me that, not only does that defeat the purpose, it's not something that I enjoy doing when I have the alternative of doing two things. Now that probably speaks to potentially just the way I my brain works. Um, I, I'm one of those people that tends to have two trains of thought going simultaneously and one usually suffers because of the other. <laughs> like, I feel like I've got two, two thoughts achieving 50% of my uh, processing power most of the time. Maybe if I could get to where I could focus. When I can focus on one thing, when I can hyper-focus on something, great, I'm going to crush it. But j- most of the time, I'm operating on, on two things and I'm splitting my attention. So for me... I was told, like, the idea of, of saying, like, well, there, you know, there wasn't any software to take advantage of two screens at once. To me, just the ability to have two apps up at once is not only all I need, it's all I want. I, I don't care about anything else. So, you know, what what do you think about that? Do, do, you, do you, you know, do you, what, did you just not feel the need to have two things open? You, you would concentrate on one and forget about the other? Or what was your experience uh, Yeah, that there? would happen. Um I would kind of forget about the other thing on the other screen. It it was kind of useful in certain scenarios, like I said, on lunch breaks where I've got messaging open sure. and something that was playing. And that's what I tend to see is like if there's something that's playing like audio or a video on one screen and I'm doing something on the other, that's fine. Right. But if I've got like, let's say I have Instagram and Pinterest open, like I'm not going to sit there and go, <laughs> on those screens and i tried doing that because i was like what is this like and i'm sitting there and i'm like oh this is horrible i don't like it i don't know what i'm looking at and it feels weird Dogs for, are playing. <laughs> for those who may be viewing the youtube version of this instead of just the audio podcast what, what you may be witnessing in the background here <laughs> is my our, our, our 11 year old dog trying to encourage the seven year old dog to play so if you heard any weird thumping that's 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 what that was I do find that, you know, I, I think that that's a, a valid, um, maybe not a complaint, but an observation. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it is a specific thing where you want to have two apps open at once and you're going to concurrently use them. Like I've used examples where uh, maybe I was going to make a thumbnail for a video and I've, I've got Pixel or open on one screen. I have a OneDrive folder with a lot of stock images. Um, like our little spacey background with the little corner cut out. Um, I can go over to OneDrive and look for those and download them from OneDrive. And, and then on the same, you know, right there, I have Pixlr open and now I'm importing them into Pixlr. And then maybe I'm like, oh, I need an image of, you know, whatever. I need an image of, of a PlayStation controller. So then I can go back on the other screen. I can Google, P, you know, PS5 controller images download them and then you know start cutting out the background and i've never closed out of pixel or while things are loading over here i can be adding the text over here if you don't do that kind of stuff two screens is not really all that useful necessarily to you you know and unless you're doing the thing where look youtube and that that that's a selling point for me youtube and mm-hmm. youtube and <laughs> or netflix really... and or spotify and whatever right um one thing I did want to say, too, before we get off of this topic is I took the phone out of the case and carried it as a phone for like a day or so. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I was, you know, here's the thing. LG phones are really premium feeling. They're made out of good materials. They have pretty decent cameras. That was something I was really astounded by was the camera. The camera is really good. Um, 
but it just didn't like blow me away. Sure. You know, it's it's good as a phone, but it just wasn't like I don't know, I guess for its size and, you know, me being kind of afraid to handle it as easily as my $350 Xiaomi phone, like, I just didn't That's get a fair the point. experience that I wanted from it. Yeah, that, to me, that that is a, a fair point as well. Sometimes you, you can almost... You can almost like freak yourself out when you've got like a really expensive device because you're 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 afraid to you're afraid to use the thing. You're afraid that if you do drop it, you know what's going to happen. Or you know, yeah. I've I've spent a lot of money on this thing. It's so, horribly expensive and 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 very very pretty and slippery and big and I am not ready to drop another phone and shatter it. <laughs> sure, sure. So let's clarify one small thing real quick, um, just because I know we'll get comments about it. We are fully aware that wide mode for LG is an app that exists. We are fully aware that when using that, when using that app, that most apps that you do span app, app spanning on the duo is if the app doesn't natively support it is usually almost useless. And on LG's wide mode, it's even more useless because the, it's the very hinge. It's clunky and it just does not, like it does not, in our experience, it did not fully span across both screens. Well, evenly. so the hinge is so big yeah. down the middle that it is such a break there. Now, we did manage at the end to get some of the uh, Microsoft apps like Outlook to actually span properly where you would have your list of messages on one screen and your actual message on the other. That did actually, we did manage to get that. I don't know why it wasn't working before. One day I just tried it again and it was working. Don't know what happened to make it work, but it started working. But I think that you were using that feature about as much as I was using that feature on the Duo, which is to say essentially never. Mm Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to point that out because I know we would get comments. People say, oh, you can span apps and it works the same. And that's true. It does work yeah. the same if, you, if you're if you cool with a hinge that's annoying being being about, you know, five times thicker than that hinge. That, that's already annoying and makes spanning apps not really great unless you're doing it this way. But if the hinge is, you know, five times bigger than that, it's not a good experience in in my opinion and i think that your opinion as well so let's talk about what made you go oh man i think i should have waited i think i bought the wrong phone so <laughs> last wednesday google had their big event announcing the pixel 4a 5g the pixel 5 the new google chromecast with google tv which there have been myriad videos on this channel already thank you for the tens of thousands of people that have watched those videos incredible response to that um and i think that both of us kind of looked at the pixel 5 and the pixel 4a 5g and said man they finally made the pixel that i hoped that they would have made we had the pixel we had the pixel 2 and we had the pixel 3 and I love the Pixel 2 XL in particular. I thought the Pixel 3 was really, really good, but the battery life was apps was and is garbage. Mm-hmm. The Pixel 4 battery life was garbage. So we both backed out at that point and said, look, until they fix the battery life issue, all the great things about the Pixel phones don't matter. Mm-hmm. It, it, because the phone's dead, you know, by three o'clock if you use it heavily. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just it's not yeah. good. Um, well, now with these two new phones, Google comes out and says a couple... They basically came out and said, like, three things that we both went, hmm? Excuse me? (laughs) So, thing number one was they came out and said, the world does not need another $1,000 phone. Great. Awesome. Number two, the the world does not need every phone to have the Snapdragon 865 Plus. We're going to have a chip that's going to be 95% as fast. That's probably not mathematically true. Don't murder me over that. You know what I mean? It's... In day-to-day real-world usage, it as it is as fast unless you're playing high-end games. But mm-hmm. a lot, most people don't believe it or not, don't do that. So they're going to go with the Snapdragon 765G, and what that does is the third thing: we're going to put a bigger battery in the phone and a chip that's going to sip power. So you're you're going to go from you know oh, and also a wide-angle camera because like finally, finally, 
kudos to LG That's... for being like one of the first to do that. But Pixel now has wide angle cameras. I never thought they would do it. I'm super stoked about that. I, I yeah. like having a telephoto, but give me a wide angle over a telephoto any day of the week. It's such a fun way to take pictures. So, Pixel 5. We were like, man, this thing. They, they you know, I look, I love my Pixel 2 and my Pixel 3. I love those phones. The Pixel experience on Android is, to me, as someone who's owned a lot of Android phones, it is my favorite android experience it is clean it is it i like the way that it looks it is fast you get all of these um little added features like do you remember when you switched away from your pixel and you were like you, you start noticing all these things that you don't have anymore like call yeah. screening and mm -hmm. the the, uh, oh, I the, love the call screening now playing mm -hmm. um just all these little things that you're like you're like, ah, oh, man, I, I, I didn't realize how much I liked that. Like, I didn't realize how much I used that feature. Yeah. And then, to me, the biggest thing that you lose when you go away from a Pixel, and, and I, know, I know I'm fully aware that for a lot of people, this is not necessarily true, because I'm not going to sit here and tell you that if you bought any other phone, you're not going to have a great camera. But to me, the Pixel 5 is, you know, essentially, bar none, the Pixel phones, when if you just pick them up and you pull out your camera and you snap a picture, you know, like 99.999% of the time, it's going to be a good picture. It's just it's just going to be a good picture. Yeah. And I think that you lose that with, with a lot of other phones. And again, look, Samsung people, whatever, totally fine. I love the way that Pixel photos look. The contrasty look to them, I think, to me, it's the best camera for mm -hmm. photos that's available on Android. It might be the best camera on any phone for me. It's just the, the software on there is amazing. It I mean, just, it just, I could take a picture right now because I'm back to my Pixel 3 right now. And it's going to look good. Preparation for the Pixel 5. I could just take a picture of anything in here and yeah. it would look fine. Yep. The lighting or would look good. There'd be contrast, it'd be color, but not oversaturation, which is not something I'm into. Definitely. It'd look great. So we will have, as obvious, what is obvious now, we're going to have plenty of coverage for the Pixel 5 because we have placed our pre-order. Um, we, you know, sent back the V60, which was kind of a little bit sad to have to do, but it is what it is. It Ultimately, was sad. we don't want to, I don't want to, look, for those that don't know, um, I'm doing this like full time right now. I, I'm shooting my shot, as they say trying to make trying to trying to live my dreams um so we've by by chasing this dream of ours of mine <laughs> uh, we've cut I mean, it's, it's my dream too <laughs> i would love look the, the ultimate dream is to get not for me but for you it's my dream for your dream to come true <laughs> well that's great the ultimate dream for me is to get to where you can also fully either quit your job or get to where you're barely working and just come do this with me to make enough money to get by that way. And I don't think it's impossible. But for now, I mean, guys, like not to get too deep in the weeds on this, but we've we've cut our income by more than half to do this. Like, like we're like it's it was a big leap of faith to be like, I'm quitting my full time job that is a big paycheck every two weeks that I can count on to make YouTube videos and hope that I can make some money at it. So for us at this point, you know, six months ago being like, ah, 700 bucks, that sucks, but like, whatever. Now it's like, we want to spend $700 on a phone that you don't even really love using that's like too big yeah. for you. And, you know, so, you know, I think it was the, the call that had to be made. So we're going to get that Pixel 5 in. It's pre-ordered, have it in at the end of the month. Expect an unboxing and, and impressions and so forth. Don't think I'm going to have really any reason to do any like duo comparison videos. It seems like a weird comparison at that point. It seems like there's not really any commonality there, but um, we'll definitely have plenty of Pixel 5 coverage coming. Hopefully we'll be some of the first out there with an unboxing. Hopefully we can get that going day one and uh, have plenty of coverage out there for that. So obviously there's more than one new phone out there. Um, Samsung's got their fan edition which is the same price i believe excuse me as the pixel 5 um any any thoughts on on you know why pixel over 
Samsung, Xiaomi's got a new phone that looks ridiculously specced out for a similar price. You know, why? What about the Pixel 5 is like, I, I got to go back to the Pixel. Okay. Because well, you've mean, owned Samsung phones as well. You've had, you've had two yeah. Samsung phones now? Yeah. So, okay, over the competitors, Pixel does what I need, which is, first of all, they make phones that can fit in my hand. They have different size options. They're not gigantic phones, which I'm happy about because I'm over that. Um, the camera is amazing. But probably the most important thing to me is that Pixel doesn't have, like, a ton of software that's useless that I'm never going to use, that it forces me to have on my app drawer with all these updates. Like, I mean, there were apps on there that were just plain stupid that I'm like, what is this? Stuff and it was on LG as well, too. So. Yeah, stuff that you were just never, never, ever going to use. Mm -hmm. So just some quick information for you here that might make you feel a little bit better about your choice, too. Pixel 3, which you have in your hand, is a 5.5-inch screen. Um, of course, you've got the bezels at the top and yeah. bottom. And the Pixel 5 is a 6-inch screen, but there is essentially no bezel. The thickness is essentially the same. The weight is essentially the same. Um, let's see if I can actually get actual dimensions here. So the Pixel 3 is 5.73 inches tall. The Pixel 5 is 5.7 inches tall. So it's actually physically slightly... It's, the body of it is going to be almost identical to your Pixel 3, but the screen is going to stretch and fill the whole phone. To me, that's awesome. I Look, yeah. you have much smaller hands than I do. Mm -hmm. You have some of the tiniest hands of any human being I've ever seen. But I have small hands for a man. I do not... I'm not... A, I'm not a, look... Uh, not gonna surprise anybody here. I'm not a big guy, all right. You can even if you've seen me before. I'm like you know, eh, five eleven and a half. But if you're if you're a fighty, if you're a UFC fan, let's just say I'm, I'd be fighting in the bantamweight division. You know, not not a big guy. Some of these phones are freaking enormous. I loved the size of the Pixel Three. If like I know that that may sound crazy because now I'm using this gigantic thing. But the Pixel 3 is so one-handable, it's so comfortable mm -hmm. in your hand, that to me, that's like they just took the Pixel 3 and made the screen fill the whole body and called it yeah. a day. And I'm yeah. I'm great with that. And I love it because, like, honestly, like, what I was talking about before with being afraid to to hold my phone and, like, do stuff like that, like, you I would hold never it. do, I would never do anything like that with, you know, my LG phone that mm -hmm. I had, the V60, never, um. My Xiaomi phone I did because honestly it was pretty tough and I did drop it a few times. Probably not good for the internal stuff. I do think I messed something up inside. But um it it was tough and it was only three hundred and fifty dollars. So I'm not gonna like cry myself to sleep at night. I'm gonna be upset, but I can get another one, you know. It did it didn't feel like it was like it. like if I if if I broke the duo, which I did not buy the insurance on because I'm a rebel. Um or an idiot. I don't know which one, maybe. <laughs> but, I, I try to buy the insurance, but that's just because that's me. At the same time, I've... I, God, how many phones have I owned? I don't even... Dozens. Dozens and dozens of phones. I'm an idiot. I buy stupid amounts of phones. I have only ever broken by dropping... Or any through any means, I've only ever broken one phone. And it was a Samsung Is that the blue Samsung one. Galaxy S three that I was still using when the S five was out because I'd rooted it and was running Cyanogen mod back when that was a thing that you not that you would actually want to do, which I don't really think is a thing anymore. I mean it is a thing, but I don't care anymore. Um, I dropped it. It had been I'd had it for over over two years and I dropped it and the, the screen stopped working. And that yeah. was all she wrote. <laughs> And, and I dropped it. The power button wasn't there, I think. You're right. The power button literally just stopped working like... over time. So I had like a, a software solution that I forgot about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That phone was a, a champ though. It, it, um, no case, no cases. The fact that I'm using the bumper on the duo is very strange to me. And I'm still not sure how much I like the bumper because I don't like cases. Yeah. This is so yeah. big. I don't want to put a case on a big phone, make a big phone bigger. Mm -hmm. But at any rate. I think I think that you're gonna be happy with the Pixel. Like I've said earlier, give me a Pixel 3 with a bigger screen, a wide angle camera, and a better battery, and I would have never left. I would have never yeah, left the Pixel brand. Yes. So that's 
exactly what I'm excited for. They've got a cool new color. And you're going to get to experience for the first time uh, a 90 hertz refresh rate. Oh, it's going to be weird. It's great. I I kind of miss it. I kind of don't miss it. I don't know, but it's a 90 hertz refresh rate. So you're going to get to enjoy that as well. So let's move on to the, uh, at this point, we're just going to have two segments because this this was, I feel like we had a good conversation here. So we just let it keep rolling. So call it phone talk. Phone talk. phone talk. <laughs> well, this is supposed to be a gaming and tech and like general nerd culture podcast. And we almost always just stick with gaming because that's just what's on our minds. But, mm-hmm. and I cover so much tech in the YouTube channel already that it's like, let's talk about video Bleeding games. Bleeding over. <laughs> yeah, but here we are. Let's, 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 let's actually do the thing. So today we have the number one rated game via Metacritic of the last decade. And I, I can almost guarantee that you will not guess what it is. We've already covered a lot of great games, right? We've covered The Last of Us. Excuse me. We've covered um, Breath of the, Breath Wild. the Wild. We've covered Red Dead. But this game, and again, look, there was like a five-way tie for first place. So, I mean, you know, whatever. But, like, they had it listed God, as number one. what could one. it be? I'll give you a hint. It is a Mario game, and I still don't think you'll get it. Is it Dr. Mario whatever for the Android phone or for uh, <laughs> the, in the, the phone, the mobile game? No, but that would be incredible <laughs> if that was the number one rated game. It's is on... it Mario Maker? Nope. It's on the Wii, though. It is a Paper sequel. Mario. It's a sequel. It's got, it's, got, it's got a number two in it. It's not Paper Mario. <laughs> it's it's kind of hard to guess. It is. Do you give up? Mm-hmm. It is Super Mario Galaxy 2. Oh, I should have guessed that one. It has a 97 Metacritic score with a user score of 91. This game, wow. check this out. This is the thing that is mind-blowing to me. Okay, it doesn't have, like, the thousands of user reviews that a lot of uh, other games do. But 339 positive user reviews, 19 mixed, 17 negative. 17 people played Mario Galaxy <laughs> 2 and was like, I gotta go tell people how I, much I hate this game. Oh, okay. I don't get it. So basically, for my okay, all they did with, with Galaxy 2 is they said, hey, Galaxy 1 was, like, really, really good. So what if we just made a bunch more levels and then gave you Yoshi? And everybody went, yeah. Well, duh. <laughs> Heck yeah, let's go. I'm all about that. Let's Looks get amazing. Yoshi in on this. <laughs> what was I watching the other day and somebody called Yoshi Yoshi and it really bothered me? Oh, it was, um... Oh, God, there's some YouTube channel that we watch and I hate the way that he says things. Yoshi. He's like European. He says Yoshi you know and he says Mari- uh, Mario. Mario. He says was Mario. It, it was. I remember who it was. I remember who it was. I gotta pull up a picture because this this amuses me. So there's a, there's a <laughs> there's a YouTube channel called Wolf Den, spelled W U L F F. Oh my god, that's what it is. Okay, Wolf Den, because his last his name is Bob Wolf. I stumbled onto this channel maybe six months ago, and um. He makes really good content, okay? Makes makes really good stuff. But I noticed, well, I, th- I believe you commented on it at first that you were like, "Wow, this yeah. guy, this guy looks, this guy looks strangely similar to you." Well, see, what happened was I walked into the living room and you were playing one of his videos, and I was like, "Is I was like, is that like, is that him? You thought, like, you did thought he? It- <laughs> where did it?" What's the studio? What it like? And I like looked into the studio, and I was like, it looks the same. Yeah, you're I was like, like, what it's happened? Him. So I was Just gonna out of the yeah out of my periphery. I was like, what the? F-? I I was gonna tweet <laughs> at Bob Wolf on Father's Day because he I, it amused me that he looked so similar to me, and we we're both doing the same kind of thing. Oh, look, his be- his videos are better than mine. His cameras are better than mine. His gears better than mine. Fair enough. So, but then I was, I was going to tweet at him, like, Happy Father's Day, and act like he was my dad. And then I realized that I was like, well, I don't know how old this guy is. I don't look like I'm as old as I am. So I was like, I can find out how old he is. So I Googled it. His birthday September 13th, 1989. My birthday September 23rd, 1989. We were born 10 days apart. So he can't be my dad. He's only 10 days older than me. So I was like, what the hell? So there, there you go. There's your there's your image there of, of my, my 10 days older than me dad. Um, I would love... 
I would love nothing. More. And here's a really disappointing thing. I I made some like a like a side by side image rough like a I like image searched them or something. This is like super creepy sounding, but it was it was amusing. And I like took a picture of myself like with like the same like kind of you know try to make it look similar. And I like I think I like tweeted it at him and like made some stupid some stupid joke or something. And I was you know hopeful that he'd see it and say something back because I thought it was funny the fact that we're yeah. ten days apart and. We look like Looks the same similar. the same damn person. It's ridiculous, but he he did not uh, did not either see it or respond. Maybe maybe he saw it and was like, that's, "That that's creepy as hell." <laughs> Talk to this guy and got the hell out of here. <laughs> maybe I don't he know. knows something you don't. <laughs> maybe maybe he got freaked out by it. I don't know. But yes, he does say Mario and Yoshi and um, yeah. I, I was trying to remember if it was him or if it was the guy from Nintendo Life because they both say Mario. So he, he, yeah, he also does it too. But the Yoshi, th- no, I think it was Nintendo Life who said Yoshi. Maybe maybe it was. Maybe it was the guy yeah. the guy from Nintendo Life that says uh, he always says hello, you lovely people, in the weirdest hello, in the cre- people. in the creepiest. <laughs> It's possible. Hello, you lovely people. Lovely people. <laughs> Alex from Nintendo Life. Good YouTube channels, though. Good, good, definitely, if you've not, if you if you're a fan of Nintendo content, both of them cover a lot of really good Nintendo content, like Super Mario Galaxy 2, which is Mar- Mario Galaxy is my favorite Mario game of all time. Mario Galaxy 2 is just more of it. I don't know why I don't consider it to be my favorite, since it's essentially the same game with more content. Maybe it's because the original was the game that I first was like, wow, look at you know the planets and jumping from orb to orb. So and Galaxy 2 was like more of that, so it doesn't like stand out in my head the same way, even though, I mean, it, it, realistically, it, it should, because it's the same thing. So I just want to throw this in there, because I've been thinking about this. That Dr. Mario game that was on mobile, Mm -hmm. when I popped my sim sim back into the Pixel 3, apparently that game was downloaded on my phone, which is funny because I only played it like one time. And I was really just kind of weirded out by the pill being like the notification thing like it would pop down and it'd have like a pill right there and it was just like you were running around like picking up pills like mario really he's like, a doctor a, come but on it was a weird game but he was like, a licensed physician where do you think he went to school where, where you think did mario he, go to school where do you think he got his doctorate from there's probably some school that like grandpa toad Runs. Maybe he's a doctor like Doctor Love or something like you're like yeah. like you're not real like like uh, no, you're not a, really a he's, doctor. He's a pill head and he's like I'm the doctor. They call me the doctor. Look at all my pills. Ah. Come and come and get your. Uh, Look oh. at me do a front somersault. <laughs> Wahoo! <laughs> Think he sells any of those mushrooms? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I mean, friends. look. His Look. friends are the green mushrooms. <laughs> no, not the toads not. Are mushrooms. You don't eat the toads. <laughs> but they're although, mushrooms. Though. Although, maybe the toads are the most hallucinogenic of all the mushroom varieties. Maybe if you ate a toad, maybe that's what happened. Maybe Mario ate a toad, and that explains all the weirdness in the Mario world about crushing turtles and uh, feather turning in, in, into a raccoon tail, which lets you fly somehow. I think all of Mario is some sort of hallucinogenic fever dream. Mm-hmm. I mean, not none yeah. of it makes sense otherwise. Yeah, no, none of it does. You know, what's also weird is in Mario Odyssey that there were like different types of human people. Like mm-hmm. there were people in New Donk City, which is a horrible name, that like looked like people. And then the mayor like kind of was like taller, more cartoony. And then Mario is like a foot fucking tall. Yeah, like Mar- he's like a walking baby with a mustache. Yeah, it like, is. It's just all so weird. It is a rather strange visual, right? He's that you've got like so little. Like, why is he? Like, I'm, I'm showing an image right now. Mario running past a normal city man, <laughs> and he comes up to about his navel. If you saw, <laughs> if you saw this man running by you, <laughs> yeah, the heart attack. You'd be like, "What in the hell?" Not only is he like his his proportions are weird, right? His head. Right. His head is literally the size of his torso. Could you imagine? Why a per- is he wearing gloves? Imagine if my <laughs> if my head and my torso yeah. were the sa- this to this were the same size. Here's another thing I've noticed about Mario: 
if if and I, I remember I have a vivid memory of when I was younger. I was maybe thirteen or so, and my little sister, who was ten years younger than me, um, shout out to Kaylin if you happen to be watching this video for whatever reason. I doubt you are, but who knows? Stranger things happen. And I noticed because babies, Mario is shaped like he's proportioned like a baby. He is shaped so, like a baby. He's got baby shapes. So a normal adult. It is no problem for me to touch my hands together over the top of my head, and there's all this <laughs> negative space, right? But a baby or Mario, if he were to try to do this, his his he would have no. It would be like it would. There would be no negative space between arms and between head. Like he couldn't do this. There's no way he could. His hands would be touching here, but no space. And it, it, it I noticed that that was true about Kaylin as when she was like three, because she was like a baby. And I was like, hey, Kaylin, touch your hands together over your head. And she did it, but her arms were touching her head all the way up. And I thought that was the funniest thing I'd ever seen. That's ridiculous. Why are they shaped like that? Why are their heads so damn big and their bodies are so small? It doesn't make any sense. I like the fact that you're like, Kaylin, put your hands over your head. And she's, she's like, like okay. Whatever, and, okay. I, I, and I'm like, that's hilarious. <laughs> He's sitting there laughing at her and she's like, ha, 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 ha. I mean, okay, realistically, it's because our brains are really big and, you know, whatever. But, you know, no, I, I, scientifically, I know why that's the case. But it looks ridiculous. And that's, the, that's the point. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Why doesn't Luigi do backflips and stuff? He does. What? Yeah, just not in certain games. Like no, in Luigi's I've Mansion. Seen him do one. No backflipping going on in, in Spooky Town, all right? <laughs> Well, see, maybe if he did, then he would be less scared of the ghosts. Maybe they. I think he's so scared that he doesn't <laughs> want to jump. He's like, uh, he's constantly shaking like a leaf, God, he's and he's a, moaning and groaning. Mario. <laughs> yeah, no, he can he can do that kind of stuff. In fact, in like Super Smash Brothers, he does this weird thing where he kind of like crouches and, and gets ready, and then he and then he jumps and fires himself like this, like a. <laughs> Like a projectile all the way across the map, and if he, if like he headbutts you, yeah, and if he hits you with his head, it'll just just send you flying. So he's very agile. Poor Luigi, he's such a loser. Kind of, he's kind of a loser. Remember when Nintendo did the the year of Luigi? No. Was it was that what they called it? They called it like yeah, like the year of yeah. They called it the year of Luigi, and it was like such a disappointment because like I think they it was like one it's like one thing like like what, the crappy year that was. Didn't have anything. It's one of those things where it's like he's such a wonderful character and he's so pure and wholesome, but he just kind of is a loser. They they did like, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. It was a sequel. They did New Super Luigi U, which is based on Super Mario Brothers U, and it just had 82 new levels that were shorter um, and more difficult. And like, then they did Mario and Luigi Dream Team, which was a fourth game in that series, which was not a Luigi game. That was a Mario and Luigi game. And then they made a, a Dr. Mario clone, essentially, that was Luigi. It was Dr. Luigi. Riding on your brother's coattails. The year of Luigi is just you just you reskinning your, your, your more famous brother's work. Come on, Luigi. Right. Get it? Get it together. Right. No, it's not his fault. It's like when the parents are like, hey, let your brother play, and then they give him like a controller that isn't hooked up or whatever. It's like pity almost. Some some favoritism going on there. But do you remember when he had the death stare? Oh, yeah, when he would drive by on Mario Kart? That was the true Luigi coming out. That was one of my favorite, one of my favorite things I've seen in a long time. It was him, <laughs> him, him driving by in Mario Kart and just give it, just... Given that sideways stare, it's fantastic. Really good stuff. Amazing. Well, guys, we're sitting at the 45 minute mark, so I think it's a good place to wrap things up. Um, as always, there's links down there in the description if you're on YouTube. If, if you're not, <clears throat> excuse me, scaryfliteral.com is our website. You can find links to everything there. All of our social media is linked up at the top there. Try and interact with people on Twitter. We are almost at 700 Twitter followers. Trying to build that back up once upon a time. We had a Twitter account with like four or 5,000 followers and I deleted it because I got frustrated one day and I have uh, problems uh, with doing things like that. So trying to <laughs> build that back up again several years later. The dogs are very upset that I deleted that Twitter account. They, they're not, not happy about it. So go hit Twitter. Hey, hush. Hush, dummy. 
So go check us out on Twitter. Give us a follow there. Obviously, YouTube is where most of our content goes out. Um, anything else you want to say before we close things out? It feels weird to not be thanking sponsors, but we're still not taking sponsorships on this video just yet. we got to get the YouTube base built up, and then maybe we'll start doing sponsorships on this. Oh, uh, do go to iTunes and leave us a rating or a review on iTunes, um, and that reminds me that I need to actually... Um, I need to actually do a thing where I'm going to thank the last person who did leave an iTunes review or rating. Space Miner Ace said, really enjoy the YouTube shows. Looking forward, and it cuts off because it's the web version. Thanks for making YouTube shows. Looking forward to hearing your podcast as well. So thank you, Space Miner Ace, for leaving a review and a rating on iTunes. Go be like him, and I will give you a shout out on the show on the next episode. So... Thank you for joining me today, Jesse. My name is Shane. This is Podcast Revived. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends. If you enjoy my content, please consider becoming a Scary If Literal member. You'll get access to a whole bunch of emoticons to use with live streams and a shout out on an upcoming video. Thanks, as always, for your continued support.